In the meantime, have a great one. Yes. Oh my god, it's raining. Oh my god, oh my god, it's raining. <laughs> in my life and in my creative work is to write things down. I stopped trying to remember the most important detail. Wow! The rain is quite heavy, huh? Eh? What is this rain, yep? Yeah? Sunny day and rainy day. Did you wash your hand and face? I only wash my kids. I only wash my hands. I started writing those things down instead. And one of the most important places I do that is in an app called Notion. In this video, I'm going to break down how I use Notion to manage the craziness of day-to-day -day life and focus on my priorities in my business and my life. <laughs> two years, I've gone from working as a solo freelancer to a 10-person team. It has been the wildest ride of my life. I had to learn so many things, how to manage a team, how to recruit and hire talented people, how to delegate, how to make sure all of these different moving parts continue to operate at a high standard, even if I'm not there myself all the time. I quickly became overwhelmed. One key thing that saved me was developing a set of rock-solid standard operating procedures known as SOPs. SOPs save my life. When I hired my first employee, we started a weekly ritual. Every week, I would demonstrate how I completed just one repeated task. It could be anything. Publishing a post on our blog, paying an invoice, scheduling a meeting for me, kind of rambling all over the place. But here's where Bethany would take a very critical second step. Actually, rewatch the recording of that Zoom call. And she would turn my messy explanation into a streamlined checklist in Notion. Let's take a look at a couple. So let's just look through here, for example, if I ask my assistant or someone else at the company to add a translated article to a blog post, sometimes we get people who have taken the time to actually translate our blog posts into other languages. And I like to take the step of just adding links to those translations to the original post. There's some instructions where to put it. This is an example of the one where we added Russian, Chinese, and Portuguese versions. Let's say, for example, we want to add one of our customers to a Slack channel. So this is an action that we take often. And you can see it's, it's essentially a checklist. It's the steps that anyone can take to complete this task. Some of these are toggles, so they actually have some steps which are sometimes needed, but you can also hide them if you already know what's being described. This is the basic checklist up here at the top, and then we often have little comments or little memos, such as if customers are having issues with the invites to Slack, this is kind of a secondary checklist we can follow to solve that issue. We'll look at a different one, for example, creating an ebook. So this is a, a different example in that this is a much more extensive SOP. We're essentially compiling about 15 or 20 existing articles from our blog into an ebook that then gets sold as a Kindle book on Amazon. So you can see it's 
quite a bit more involved. There's many steps. And this is more of a project, I would say. But what's so valuable here is we only do this maybe once a year, once every two years. If we didn't have this documentation, if we didn't have all these notes, every one or two years, we'd have to completely reinvent this from scratch and you know, try to remember and piece together what we learned the last time. This way, we remember all the lessons we learned in the past, and we can just follow the steps that we developed the last time. You can see that they tend to be structured in terms of actions. In other words, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to download a, a list? Are you trying to export audio? Are you trying to forward an email? It's not specific to any one person or any one function. Anyone in the company can go onto this page, which is accessible throughout the company, and can do a search up here in the little search bar. Uh, for example, if we type in forward here, they can find the action and they can take that action without needing to ask anyone, without needing training, without needing a bunch of hand holding. It allows us to move faster, to innovate faster, to not have to reinvent the wheel, and overall to have a company that people spend as much time as possible doing work that utilizes their best skills and their best thinking rather than trying to remember how to complete basic tasks. We also use Notion to organize our household. A couple of years ago, we finally bought our very first home in Long Beach in Southern California. I've now been a homeowner for almost two years, and I can say, without exaggeration, running a household is at least as complicated as running a business. Bills to pay, things to fix, contractors and service providers to manage, passwords to remember, maintenance schedules, the crush of day-to-day -day chores and cleaning and errands. Luckily, we also use Notion for this. I'm going to introduce my wife, Lauren Valdez, to explain how it works. Hi, I'm Lauren, and I'm going to walk you through our home's operating manual. So we started this operating manual when the previous owners of our house gave us this thick, physical file of all the house history, including documents on the remodel, different service providers they've used, things like that. We took copious notes and we decided to make this digital so that all the information could be searchable and actionable. So let's dive into Notion. So a principle we practice with Notion is capturing everything as soon as you have the information and you can organize it, reorganize it, reformat it later. So when we got all of our notes on the house, we just dumped it into these toggles. It has lots of different information on the different systems like the security system, the internet, the kitchen, all these kinds of things. Like we even got these notes from the old owners on paints and grouts. And you can see this links to a database that has all the different colors of the paints and grouts and what they're called so that if we ever need to make updates, we can quickly reference this and purchase the same materials. There's lots of maintenance notes in here as well, like how to clean a hot tub, the manual for that, all that kind of stuff, it all lives in here. This information I've been slowly reorganizing into databases so that it's easier to find and we're able to take action on this information. Down here, I have these different tables. The first one is on house services. On this page, we have all of the service providers and utility and things like that that we've used on the home. We started this page because it's actually really difficult to find good service providers. For example, we have an antique stove that needs a special kind of repair person, and so that's who we have to go to. We also had this problem when we bought the home, we had this motorized gate that was broken, and the old owners told us that they couldn't find anyone to fix it. And so we had to go through like three or four people before we finally found someone to fix it. We have their information in here, and if we ever have a friend that needs a gate fixed, you know, we can give them that number. In here, we keep all of the key information that makes it easy, whether it is me or Tiago, or maybe someone in our household, using this information to schedule a repair. So we have things in here like the phone numbers, the account numbers, uh, we have details on is auto billing set up, is the password shared in our shared password vault, and then we also have who is responsible for that service, who is the person whose name is on the bill, that sort of thing. So I've added new databases and new pages as that information has become important to maintaining our home. For example, we have a 15 month old baby and recently I had to reorganize all the closets to get all of his Christmas gifts into the closets and that took reorganizing a lot of things into storage. It was really important to me to track where I stored stuff so that I could easily find it for a future child or for loaning it out to a friend. So I created this database called Storage and it 
has different Ooh, items no. and where those items are located in which closet, in which area of the closet. And then I also track when this was last edited. And then there are certain tags, like these are tagged baby, but I might have stuff tagged, you know, kitchen or guest or things like that. So this way we can easily find it. Also, when it comes to managing a household, there's things. Things that you have to manage over very long periods of time, over you know, years. So we have a database that also keeps track of time of certain things that we have to do. Like we have to change the HVAC filters every six months, or you have to clean the air ducts every three to five years. So the next time we have to do that is 2025. And because these are such long timelines, we want to track it on something like this rather than a calendar or a cast manager. Our Notion Home Operating Manual saves us a ton of time and it gives us a lot of clarity on what we need to do to maintain our home. The third way I use Notion as a second brand is to support my creative efforts. Learning is my passion, but it also happens to be our business's main marketing channel. The blog posts that I publish are what bring new people into the business and into our courses. I needed to figure out a way 